Spoken Priesthood Session of the General Conference to the Fathers and the Sons. And as you might expect, my five daughters, 24 granddaughters, and an increasing number of great-granddaughters have been asking for equal time. <laughs> so today I will speak primarily to the mothers and the daughters of the Church. My dear wife, Barbara, has had an eternally significant influence on our daughters and granddaughters, and they in turn on her. Mothers and daughters play a critical role in helping each other explore their infinite possibilities despite the undermining influence of the world in which womanhood and motherhood are being corrupted and manipulated. Speaking to the women of the Church nearly a century ago, President Joseph F. Smith said the following, It is not for you to, lead, to be led by the women of the world. It is for you to lead the women of the world in everything that is praiseworthy, everything that is godlike, everything that is uplifting and purifying to the children of men. Sisters, we, your brethren, cannot do what you were divinely designed to do from the before the foundation of the world. We may try, but we cannot ever hope to replicate your unique gifts. There is nothing in this world as personal as nurturing or as life-changing as the influence of a righteous woman. I understand that some of you young women do not have mothers with whom you can discuss these issues, and many of you women do not presently have daughters in your lives. But because all women have within their divine nature both the inherent talent and the stewardship to mother, most of what I will say applies equally to grandmothers, aunts, sisters, stepmothers, mothers-in-laws, leaders, and other mentors who sometimes fill the gaps for these significant mother-daughter relationships. Now, young women, your mothers adore you. They see in you the promise of the future generations. Everything you accomplish, every challenge you overcome, brings them pure joy, and likewise, your worries and heartaches are their worries and heartaches. Today, I wish to give you young women some suggestions on how to take full advantage of your relationships with your mother. And then I have a few thoughts to share with the mothers about how they can maximize their influence with their daughters as well as the other members of their families. It is unfortunately all too easy to illustrate the confusion and distortion of womanhood in contemporary society immodest, immoral, intemperate, women jam the airwaves, monopolize magazines, and slink across movie screens, all while being celebrated by the world. The Apostle pa Paul spoke prof prof prophetically of perilous times that will come in these last days, and specifically referenced something that may have seemed particularly perilous to him silly women laden with sin, led away with diverse lusts. Popular culture today often makes women look silly, inconsequential, mindless, and powerless. It objectifies them and disrespects them, and then suggests that they are able to leave their mark on mankind only by seduction, easily the most pervasively dangerous message the adversary sends to women about themselves. And so, my dear young women, with all my heart, I urge you not to look to contemporary culture for your role mo models and mentors. Please look to your faithful mothers for a pattern to follow. Model yourselves after them, not after celebrities whose standards are not the Lord's standards, and whose values may not reflect eternal perspective. Look to your mother. Learn from her strengths, her courage, and her faithfulness. Listen to her. She may not be a whiz at texting. She may not even have a Facebook page. 
But when it comes to matters of the heart and the things of the Lord, she has a wealth of knowledge. As you approach the time for marriage and young motherhood, she will be your greatest source of wisdom. No other person on earth loves you in the same way or is willing to sacrifice as much to encourage you and to help you find happiness in this life and forever. Love your mother, my young sisters. Respect her. Listen to her. Trust her. She has your best interests at heart. She cares about your eternal safety and happiness. So be kind to her. Be patient with her imperfections, for she has them. We all do. Now, I share a few thoughts with you mothers about the special role you play in your daughter's lives. We have a family friend who travels often and members of her extended family. Her primary observation after each trip is how much the young mother, the young women, behave like their mothers. If the mothers are thrifty, so are the daughters. If the mothers are modest, so are the girls. If the mothers wear flip-flops and other casual clothing to sacrament meeting, so do their daughters. Mothers, your example is extremely important to your daughters, even if they don't acknowledge it. Throughout the history of the world, women have always been teachers of moral values. That instruction begins in the cradle and continues throughout the lives of their children. Today our society is bombarded with messages about womanhood and motherhood that are dangerously and wickedly wrong. Some following these things can put your daughters on a path to sin and self-destruction. Your daughters may not understand that unless you tell them, or better, unless you show them how to make good choices. As mothers in Israel, you are your daughter's first line of defense against the wilds of the world. Now, mothers, I understand that it sometimes appears that our children aren't paying attention to the lessons we're trying to teach them. Believe me, I've seen the glazed overlook that comes in the eyes of teen teenagers when you're coming to what you think is the best part of your instruction. <laughs> Let me assure you that even when you think your daughter is not listening to a thing you say, she is still learning from you as she watches you and watches your action to see whether they match your words. As Ralph Waldo Emerson said, 